The round table for me presented an avenue for benchmarking experiences across middle and low income countries for deepening knowledge and understanding what transferable skills are. So the purpose of the event was to share the evidence gap map with a variety of experts and to get their feedback. Where do they see priorities in terms of gaps? Where do they see areas of synergy? And what are we missing? to engage themselves. What do implementers on the ground, what do they see as the challenges? As well as for us as, as donors to find kind of a direction. Uh, experiences came from Kenya, from my country, Nigeria, from Rwanda, from Peru. The Peruvian government. When you're thinking about transferable skills, how, how are you also connecting in teacher pedagogy? Because this kind of a setting really allows us to identify those people that we can really partner with to move an agenda forward. We need to move uh, forward in better understanding how the whole concept of mentoring can improve transferable skills. There's lots of things that have emerged from this meeting in terms of areas for future action and collaboration. There's other skills that are needed simply to survive, and if we only focus on those that lead to employability, we're going to leave those out. I'm wondering if you feel that the curriculum in secondary schools ought to be changed and can be changed to infuse it more with these types of soft skills. What I take away is could we also create extracurricular activities that support the acquisition of transferable skills? Some go into technical skills training, others then would get on-the-job experience, and it's, it's really situational, and that's what makes Akazi Kinosik successful. Uh, close to 19,000 youth now have gone through the program, 8,000 that have really got, gained jobs. The fact that we don't have a lot of evidence on how you change institutions to better teach children transferable skills, that's, that's a really big missing piece, and for our foundation to think about how it is that we're going to potentially address that. Additionally, there was not a lot of research or evidence around what it takes to actually get teachers to change their behavior to actually facilitate the learning of these skills. Another important thing that really emerged from this discussion was the need to engage uh, employers. They are uh, the consumer and the final tester of how well we imparted those transferable skills. And we want to add in some courses, for example, education for employment and personal social development, significant content on, on how to develop social emotional skills in our students. Employers hire for hard skills, but they fire for soft skills. Taking the policy makers along, how do you make them part of the change process right from uh, day one? So we are working with two branches under the Ministry of Education, mostly. Just influencing the policy or changing the policy is not enough. What we have realized is that you need to be part of it. So at each level, at the state level, at, uh, at the division level, at the district level, uh, our team members will work with side by side with the government uh, officials. What for me I'm going to take away from this gathering, that is the importance of coordination uh, at uh, all levels. Some of the bigger topics that we're thinking about digging deeper into would probably be the teacher training aspect. If we want to develop transferable skills on students, our teacher must have some knowledge on how to do it. Because I think that really does then, you know, lead to teachers also being more informed about how do you teach those skills because then you link the pedagogy to the formal assessment at the very end. And as well, we need to continue looking at measurement. When you say that this person has a leadership quality or when you say that this person is able to speak their mind, how does one assist that? It's not easy, but it can be done. And we use cognitive interviews with youth as well as we got parent report and youth report. It's important to get reports from multiple respondents. There's three others that we didn't see significant um, improvements for the treatment group. So that's kind of, we're, we're asking ourselves about why. It does show why it's so important to do a study like this with a control group so that we can differentiate the gains that the youth have over time from the gains that they're getting from the program. There's still a lot of questions around all of those different things. The traits for the vocational training. But I do think that we have a better sense of where to go moving forward.